Time for some 3-3 performance mods. We got cams. We got cylinder heads. We got intake manifolds. Which one makes the most power? Hello, everybody. I'm Rich Holder, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're looking at a 383 small block Chevy. A lot of different combinations. I mean, because after all, why would you build a 350 when you could just build a bigger, better 383? We're going to take a look at a number of different combinations. We have two different cylinder heads. We have two different camshafts, and we have two different intake manifolds. We're even going to look at the air-fuel ratio of the different intake manifolds and talk about how do we make this any better. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and take a look at a number of different 383 small block Chevy combinations because I normally recommend the 383 if somebody is putting something together. It doesn't make any sense just to build a 350 if you're going to get all new parts for it. Just step up to the 383. If you're going to the wrecking yard, yes, by all means, just grab a 350. And these same kind of things can be done on the 350 as well as the other displacements. We're going to take a look at a number of different combinations on the 383 from mild to not totally wild, but to, you know, something that's still streetable. But we're going to look at two different camshafts, both of them hydraulic flat tap and camshafts, so not even expensive hydraulic roller stuff. We're going to look at two different sets of cylinder heads, some inexpensive as cast ones, and then more expensive airflow research heads, which are definitely help in power. We're going to look at two different intake manifolds, the most common two, single plane and dual plane. So we got a lot of ground to cover, so let's jump right in. Our test motor, as I said, 383 small block Chevy. It had a cast crank. It did have steel H-beam rods. It had forged pistons. These were dish pistons, which brought the compression down on this thing. With a 64cc chamber, the dish in this piston put these things around in the low nine. So it was not very high compression. We started off with a set of Speedmaster. This was done way back in 2010. So these were listed as Pro Comp, but you guys probably know them as Speedmaster. They were 190cc uh, as cast aluminum small block performance heads. They had a 202.16 valve package on them. The camshaft that we started with was an Extreme Energy 274H, indicating a flat tap of camshaft, a hydraulic flat tap of camshaft. It was 490 lift. It was a 230, 236 degree duration at 50 and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We topped this with another Speedmaster dual plane intake manifold. We ran a Holley 750 Street HP. We This thing did have 1.5 roller rockers. We ran an HEI style distributor and inch and 7 8 headers. Naturally, we optimized the, you know, we tried adjusting the distributor and the timing. We locked out this distributor in this case, and we ended up with total timing of 35 degrees and run in this manner. Our 383 Chevy did very well, produced kind of what we would expect in this case with a mild camshaft and, you know, not a totally free flowing cylinder head, more toward the stock side than the performance side. But this thing produced 400 or 392 horsepower power and 455 foot pounds of torque so good on the torque production but I, I would say maybe a little bit lacking on the horsepower production but let's take a look and see here's what happened when we made our first modification what we did was hey let's install a bigger camshaft this was an extreme energy 284 camshaft and we'll go ahead and take a look at the specs on that that one was a slightly more lift, 507, 510, more duration, a 240, 246 at 50, and the same 110 degree lobe separation angle. So all of you tight LSA guys can chime in right now about how you need to have this at 105 or 106. This thing had valve reliefs in it, so it probably would have enough room to change the camshaft. But again, we're just testing these things the way that we had. In fact, both of these camshafts were camshafts that we had at West Tech at, at our disposal to run. So you can take a look at this is kind of typical of camshafts. You can see that a bigger camshaft in this case did indeed make more power. 405 horsepower peak torque was actually changed not dramatically 453 foot pounds but what you'll notice and this is kind of typical and we'll come to see this later on with the intake test that the bigger camshaft made more power from 4,000 on out in this case 
all the way out to 5,500 and, and beyond that how had we revved it that far, but it did lose power below that. So this is kind of inherent in a camshaft like this. When you trade and go to a bigger camshaft, a lot of times you can gain peak power, but you're, tend to, you're going to lose low speed power, at least in that RPM range. Now, it's important to note also that if you just compared this and said, hey, this one made this much torque or this one made this much torque, they're very, very comparable. So you need to look at the whole curve and that's why I supply these. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we stepped up our game and installed Airflow Research cylinder heads. Okay guys, we jumped in and took a look at the 383 and the buildup and then what happens when we go from a 274 cam to a 284 cam. Now let's look what happens when we improve cylinder head flow by replacing the Speedmaster ASCAS heads with the set of CNC ported Airflow Research heads. In this case, they were 194. 5cc eliminator heads and we like those particular cylinder heads they have always worked well they work well on on smaller displacement small blocks and all the way up to this 383 it really depends on the kind of power output that you're trying to make we've made 550 horsepower with these and they have enough flow to support that and even more so they were a good choice for this particular application so let's find out what happens when we install the airflow research heads in place of the speedmaster heads this was our combination with the Speedmaster heads and our 284 camshaft, our dual plane intake manifold, the 750, we had the HEI distributor and we had inch and three quarter headers that made 405 horsepower and 453 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happens when we added the airflow research heads with the same cam, the same intake, same carburetor. All we did was adjust the jetting slightly and the peak power jumped up dramatically up to 480 horsepower and 497 foot pounds of torque so hovering near the 500 foot pounds of torque mark so this thing did really well and like i said all we did was everything else was the same the headers were the same the rockers were the same the camshaft all of that stuff was the same and then all we did was change from one set of cylinder heads to the other cylinder heads. And this is the kind of power gain we got. But the interesting thing is if we take a look at this, we can go beyond this point basically going from just a cylinder head change. Because we ran this combination still with the dual plane manifold. So a lot of guys might be thinking, well, hey, Richard, you have a, enough cylinder head there. And you have a, a reasonably sized hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. Why would you be running a dual plane on that? Why, why don't you run a single plane manifold on it? So now let's jump over and take a look and see what happens when we change from a dual plane manifold to a single plane manifold. And here's what happened. So we installed a single plane intake manifold on the, and I'll go ahead and get rid of our baseline here. So this basically is a comparison between the airflow research headed low compression 383 with a single plane intake manifold and a dual plane intake manifold. And I'll go ahead and label those, but so that you know, the single plane manifold did indeed make a little bit more power, although not a lot. It made 487 horsepower. Peak torque was down to 485 foot pounds of torque. But I want to point your attention to the low speed power below 5,000 RPM. And especially in this range between 3,500 and 4,000 RPM, we have a difference here of 421 foot pounds versus 481 foot pounds. So we had a 60 foot pound difference. And this single plane intake manifold, what came from the guys at Professional Products, again, something that West Tech just had sitting there. So it made for an easy comparison. So we could take the dual plane intake manifold off and put the single plane manifold on. And we see in typical fashion, single plane usually makes uh, more power at the top of the RPM range and less down low. But in this particular case, the losses down low were dramatic. So there would be there would really be no consideration for putting this single plane manifold on this combination. The dual plane would be a much better choice. You'd be much happier, especially for street driving, but really for any kind of performance application, the dual plane would be better. But I want to talk a little bit about air fuel ratios of these different intakes. Before we take a look at the air fuel, I want to show you something really quick. And we ran the single plane intake manifold on the AFR headed combination. I want to show you what's called a hero run. <laughs> so among dyno guys, what happens is you know you're running the motor you run at the same air fuel same timing same temperature all that stuff but here's what can be done if you want to you know do the hero run what you do is you make a couple of runs in a row get the oil temperature up and then because this has an electric water pump what you can do is let it sit there for 
you know, 30 seconds or whatever, and let the water temperature cool down because the, the electric water pump will continue to circulate cold water through the motor. So what you do is you get a combination of hot oil and cold water, which is ideal. And this is what happens when you do that. So here's our cold run. You can see we pick up, you know, a decent amount of power, 494 horsepower, but where you really pick it up is down at the bottom. So down at the bottom here, and we and peak torque was up to 497 foot-pounds. But down here, you know, at 35, 3600, 415 foot-pounds to 433 foot-pounds. So you're talking about 15, and, and in some areas, it's like 16 or 17 foot-pounds just from a change in temperature. So it's, uh, you know, pretty cool stuff. But we don't normally do that unless we're trying to get a hero run, and we're at 499 horsepower, and we just want that 500 horsepower thing just to make ourselves feel better. But that's, I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's take a look at our air fuel curves. So if we take a look here, bring up our air fuel, get rid of horsepower, get our lambda. So this is our air fuel curve on the single plane intake manifold with the airflow research heads. This is with our 750 Holley carburetor. And you can see that uh, we start out on the load in near 13 to 1, 12.85 or 12.9. It, it dips all the way down below 11.5, which is probably a little on the rich side for an absolute aspirated motor. It goes back up to 13.2 and then levels out out here at our horsepower peak, kind of where we would want it between 12.5 and 12.75. So in order to get that number there we had to jet this thing so that we got all the rest of this basically so let me know in the comments how would you guys adjust this would you try to add jet to bring the middle part you know around 4500 to richen that up and then lean and then adjust this on the on the top end with high speed air bleeds if we could do that but if we did that, what are you going to do about the low speed power between 3,000 and 3,500 where we have this big dip at 1150? Let me know in the comments what you guys would do to adjust it. But I just wanted to show you this and show you what the kind of compromises that we have to deal with on these different combinations. But here is our dual plane combination. Here's the air fuel on our dual plane combination. And just for a second, I'm going to get rid of the single plane so you can see the dual plane by itself. I'll raise myself up here. We ran into a similar situation. So we were trying to get the air fuel in the right area out of the top where the horsepower peak is. So we have it out here, you know, between 5,000 and 5,500. We're between 12.6 or so and 12.8. So that's kind of right in the sweet spot where it will make good power. We can't manipulate it, you know, like you can with fuel injection. But in order for that to happen, we also had to live with a very, very lean center section between 4,000 and 4,500 RPM got up to as lean as 13.4. Now what we could do is throw more fuel at it and get that lean spot because I would like to not run it there. Obviously at 13.4, it's okay for you know a single pass on the dyno. It's not going to hurt itself, but I would not have it there all the time. So what you'd have to do is add fuel you could add jetting there you you guys let me know in the comments what would you do would you add jetting there bring that down change the high speed air bleed try to address the top if you did that what's going to happen to the stuff again 3000 to 3500 what are you going to do there how can you make this stuff all nice and flat without resorting to you know drilling out your metering blocks to try to get exactly the right thing for your combination because then those metering blocks are only going to be good for that combination. But let me know in the comments what you guys would do. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And before I go, I will overlay the air fuel of the single plane and the dual plane. You can see out at the top from 4,500 out to 6,000. They're really very, very comparable. But below that, we have the big rich spot on the air fuel for the single plane and the lean spot for the dual plane.